I've been trying to explain this what's happening here so I want to show it again in a more simple way with drastic results so you understand but people are still gonna say things because they're not gonna comprehend and watch what I'm showing people say it's inductive kickback it's not inductive kickback it's back EMF okay this is a 6 volt battery 6 volts I'm going to prove it. It's actually pretty full now because I've been charging it. It's at 6.12 volts, as you see. Okay? 6.12 volts. Power supply is going to stay at 5 volts. And we're going to put the multimeter on there, and you'll see it's 5 volts. Okay? 5 volts is coming out of the red. 5 volts goes through a diode. Now it tees off to another diode, which goes through the multimeter, amperage, and to the positive terminal. Okay? Because this is 6 volts, 6.12, 5 volts will not flow this way because it comes out and goes back to the negative. But this is 6 volts higher, higher than the source. So the source is not going to flow through this way. What is the source going to do? The source is going to flow it this way. Through the yellow wire. So the 5 volts is going to go through the yellow wire. Into the H bridge. And out of the H bridge. Into the ground. This is going to alternate direct current at 100% duty cycle without collapsing the field. There will be no inductive kickback. This alternating direct current goes to a choke, heavy duty choke, which is just going to start flipping polarities and pulsing. We're going to hold a magnet by it and we got a strong magnetic field coming out of there. We're going to check AC amperage through here with a clamp meter to show that a buttload of amperage is going through here. The back EMF is going to come out of the yellow, not the green. Because that's in uh, if I was using the green, that might be inductive kickback. The yellow, the positive, coming back to the positive. Now we are going to be able to be so much higher than the battery voltage here. Because of the inductive back EMF, the voltage raises a considerable amount, enough to flow pretty damn decent amperage through this way. Goes through the multimeter into the battery out of the battery into the ground that's the circuit now as you know inductive kickback does not have a lot of amperage it's a lot of voltage with no amperage okay let's start this up first thing we'll do is measure the power supply power supply is putting out 5.05 .05 volts 5.05 .05. okay 5 volts Charging amperage on a battery, 656 millivolts, 6 tenths of an amp, and going up, 662 millivolts of, no, milliamps of direct current charge is going into here, okay, 5 volts, you can't charge a 6 volt, volt battery with 5 volts, because the, amp, uh, the voltage is increased coming back out, which sends it through, the battery out of the battery and into the ground 677 milliamps and climbing okay AC amp meter to show two point six alternating current amps are going through this choke two point six amps Power supply is putting out roughly 1.7 amps or so. S putting 2.3 amps, 2.6 amps into the choke. Raising the voltage from the back EMF, which gives it plenty to cycle through a 6 volt battery and to ground all from a 5 volt source. 
Here's a magnet. And it sticks on that. We got nice huge magnetic field coming out of here. And remember, this is only the leakage because it's all enclosed by that choke. This thing got a buttload of amperage in it. Voltage raises well enough to send good amperage. Not no inductive flyback amperage, not like, you know, like a one millivolt. We're doing 683 milliamps into the battery. Okay, so that's not inductive kickback, no matter what anybody says. That's coming from the positive coming out. And all we got going into the circuit is 5 volts in. So, that's my presentation.